Hey friends, welcome back to another coffee and a movie with Irene. Today I was like, Irene, you really gotta watch something that was made in the past five to 10 years. Mix it up a little bit, pick another genre. No one wants to watch you talk about yet another 80s movie that's probably a comedy. And my response to myself was, how about you talk about the 87 comedy Back to School? But here's the thing. Back to School is a really funny movie, starring Rodney Dangerfield, obviously a really exceptional comedian. I mean, a lot of his comedy is like, bah, take my wife, which if you're not into that, then whatever, don't watch this, go on to the next one. But anyway, Back to School. The whole premise of this movie is Rodney Dangerfield is Thornton Mellon, a really super successful rich businessman who never went to college. His son is in college and he decides to make a point to his son to keep his son in college that he will go to college and finish his education. That's pretty much it. Oh, also diving? So often with comedies you'll get like a really funny premise, but then the maybe the premise is the only funny thing or you'll get a comedian or a personality and they're like, let's just put this comedian or personality in a situation and whatever. And sometimes comedies won't turn out very good just because like that alone is not enough. But Back to School is a really great example of having those things and it just being a really funny movie. There are tons of jokes, which Obviously it's a comedy, so of course there'll be jokes, but this movie is Rodney Dangerfield telling jokes for a bunch of it. Often when the film is transitioning from one scene to another, Rodney Dangerfield will be there and he'll just kind of be like saying a couple jokes in between. When I used to dream about going to college, this is the way I always pictured it. Wait a minute, when did you dream about going to college? When I used to fall asleep in high school. Plus there are a lot of super talented actors in this film. Obviously Rodney Dangerfield just existing is funny. Yeah, well you know what he knows how to do? Flunk him. Flunk me, flunk him. But there are also a lot of really great character actors in this film. Burt Young, Michael Emmett Walsh, Ned Beatty, Edie McClurg. All really great talented character actors who are just side characters. There's also Sam Kinison as a deranged history teacher. There were also a handful of really talented young actors in it, like Keith Gordon and Terry Farrell, and uh, I don't remember his name. This guy? See, it's this whole stupid capitalist system, you know? I mean, it's set up to heap rewards on the advantage and the aggressive. Yeah, a young Robert Downey Jr. Also, Danny Elfman is in this film. He made the score for the film, but he also makes an appearance in his band, the Oingo Boingo Band. Band party! So this is just one of those films that had a lot of really talented people in it uh, before they were super famous or just kind of at the start of their rise and they were all fortuitously kind of put together to make this film. I think this is probably my favorite Rodney Dangerfield film. Um, I also like Easy Money a lot and the animated film Rover Dangerfield, which I should definitely talk about someday because I loved that film as a kid. So this film, much like The Lost Boys, is really great for some 80s vibes. Ah! Shake it up, baby! Shake it up, baby! I would also literally wear any of the outfits Rodney Dangerfield wears in this film. I don't know why people diss on 80s fashion so much. Honestly, the more 80s films I watch, the more I think I would really just like to wear all of that. It's just confident, you know? It's confident to wear like a plaid coat with a bright print shirt underneath and I don't know, pinstripe pants, whatever. It's just, you make a statement. You are who you are when you wear 80s clothes. My mother-in-law once told me that my hair was very 80s and I felt pretty offended because I think objectively people are like, oh, 80s hair is the worst hair. And it's not fair that my hair is naturally pretty frizzy and not big, big, but just big-ish, right? But you know what? Now I'm like, that was a compliment. 80s hair is great. I love it. I love how fugly it is. You know what's really ugly? 70s hairstyles with the same feathered Farrah Fawcett look for every single person. Which brings me to the villain in this film, Chaz, who is a star diver. But until that day, take a hike, you elitist fraternity scumbag. Also, I guess we should talk about the diving element of this film. So there's like the dad coming back to school. Haha, <laughs> back to school. But then there's this other bit where he was a 
really successful diver in his youth and his son is trying to be on the diving team. We're supposed to believe that Rodney Dangerfield is this ex-diver. And there are also some really great scenes where they have a stunt double do the dives for him and it's very obvious it's a stunt double. And I mean, it must have been tough because you have to find a stunt double who can do dives, but like none of those kind of stunt doubles are gonna look anywhere near like Rodney Dangerfield and they're gonna have to be super naked because you have to be when you're diving. Anyway, the diving is super important and it's all wrapped up in the end with a big diving competition, whatever. And the main villain, Chaz, is like a star diver and also just general asshole. Jason's a twerp. We could have won if it weren't for him. Haven't you ever messed up? Oh. The decades may change, but the Chazes stay the same. Also, Kurt Vonnegut makes an appearance in this film. Hi, I'm Kurt Vonnegut. I mean, you should watch it alone to hear Rodney Dangerfield read a Dylan Thomas poem. Like, that's pretty excellent. It's just good, light fun where everyone succeeds in the end, pretty much. There's not too much at stake. There's great music, uh, lots of talented young actors before they were really doing anything much, and tons of jokes. So I would definitely recommend Back to School for a watch, but obviously it was made in the mid 80s. So there are a fair amount of jokes that aren't really very woke. So like, if you don't like that, then you know, don't watch it essentially. But it's a good comedy if you're just looking for something light and funny to pass the afternoon and not think about any of the myriad of things that could make you feel stressed and anxious and cry on a daily basis. Anyway, thanks for watching me talk about Back to School. It's a good one. I will try and pick a movie that is a little more current <laughs> for my next pick. I don't know, I was just feeling the 80s vibes lately, but I'll try and pull myself out of it. Anyway, hope you all have a good weekend and enjoy yourselves, watch some movies, drink as much caffeine as humanly possible, just pump it in there. I'll see you guys later. Bye.